Hey guys, back with another CoStar FanCast brought to you by the NBPA. I'm your host, Patrick Green, and today we've got a very special guest, two-time NBA champion, Lakers starting center, live from inside the bubble, JaVel McGee, what's going on? Ooh. Oh, I was expecting a crowd noise, sorry. Um, <laughs> doing, doing pretty good. Uh, just really excited, man. Just really excited to get the season back started, and uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Awesome, awesome. Um, so before we get to the fans, I think everyone is interested in kind of what's it like inside the bubble would you mind just kind of maybe even giving us a quick tour of your room um yeah for sure for sure for sure uh so uh this is my couch it was, <laughs> i would say love seat nice little love seat this is my view mm -hmm. not bad see what it's looking like out there um this is my gaming setup oh yeah stick with the call of duty right there this right here is where the magic happens. No magic at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a little messy over here, but here's all my snacks and here's a microwave. Usually they don't have microwaves in hotels, but you know, <laughs> we hopefully had to make it happen. Bathroom, the shower, you guys. Oh, there he is, there he is. Yeah, that's the front door right there. I got some boxes I, I had shipped and I need open. So yeah. It. that's amazing that's awesome so what's it like being back after you know a few months off uh being back with the brotherhood of nba players your teammates um what was that kind of initial feeling like almost like the first day of school again yeah definitely it's that we're back feeling uh we we we, we got our season got halted due to uh, obviously COVID 19 so we had something to finish and it, it felt good that first day that first practice to really be like Okay, well now we're back on our mission. We're back to where we where we where we started and where we need to finish, which is winning an NBA championship. And what's it like with you know after a long layoff like that? Is it more of a physical thing or a mental thing? Because you know to get restarted after sitting you know on your couch essentially for those couple months, what's it like? Um, it's definitely a mental thing of getting back to remembering the plays. The summer player is different from a, a, a during the season player. Um, usually, you know, summer players really where you want to get better and better and better. And then their season is more of you take everything that you learned over the summer when you apply it to making the team better and, and winning games. So for me, that three months was like a summer. It was like a, a nice, nice little three month break. So I was just really just, just exercising my mind and my body and just trying to get everything right and make sure that uh, I'm always on the task of hand to win. The unknown was going to happen. We really had no idea if the season was ever going to start again. Mm -hmm. All right. That's, that's an amazing insight. Our first question, uh, Kaylee, you're on with JaVel McGee. What's going on? Hello. Where are you calling in from, Kaylee? I am from Ireland. 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 I can hear the accent. You got fans <laughs> in, in Ireland, JaVel. Uh, what would you like to ask JaVel? Uh, well, first I want to say I've been looking at uh, all your YouTube videos. <laughs> And they're really good. But uh, my question is, uh, when did you start playing basketball? Um, I, I want to say, uh, are you okay? I have, a, I have a question to your question. When did I start just dribbling the basketball or had a basketball in my hand or really playing, like, organized basketball? Like, uh, when you kind of taught that you want to, like, uh, put effort into it. Um, okay. I would probably say 11 is when I really got serious about playing basketball. Um, mother is play basketball her whole life and my whole life um, mainly. So she used to always put me around the game. And then when I was around having extremely tall, um, she really told me like I really have a chance to at least go to college for playing basketball. And at the time, I didn't have the funds to pay for college, so that was one way for me to get education. So it was pretty cool. Thanks. Yeah. If, if you didn't know, Kaylee, uh, Javelle's mom is one of the best women basketball players of all time. Um, amazing connection that you know a, a, a mother and son both in you know playing professional basketball and doing and winning championships. Correct. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let's go to the, our next question, Eddie. Eddie, you're one on one with Javel. How you doing, Eddie? How's it going on? I get up early. I'm very <laughs> exciting. Yeah. And nice Where are you calling in from, Eddie? Chengdu, China. Yeah. Welcome. Chengdu, oh, China. China. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah, I've been there before. Oh, yes. wow. I, mm, 
Uh, and uh, I actually run a fan page of you on Chinese social media. Yeah, because uh, you are a great player and uh, you're always passion passionate. And uh, and yeah, and and now I have a, a quick question. I often see you have a Western Western back. I want to say, uh, why do you always like Western back? Your fanny pack. He's calling it a waist bag, but it's the fanny pack that I know oh. you were kind of one of the trend centers, yeah. one of the first oh. guys to. Okay. Just, yeah, okay. Yeah. Shy, yeah. yeah. So are you asking why I wear it? Why do you like Western back? Okay. Um. So, uh, I always wear shorts, like always. And the thing about shorts is my stuff would always fall out of my pockets. So I was like, man, I need to, I'm not going to start wearing pants. It's too hot for all this. So I was like, well, why not, why not start wearing fanny packs? So then I just started a collection and just started getting fanny packs. And uh, they're extremely convenient. I carry everything in there, wallet, uh, toothbrush sometimes. I mean, it's whatever. You can put everything in there. So that's why I always wear it. Thanks for your question, Eddie. Thanks for calling in from China. Welcome. Wel Nick? Welcome to Chengdu. Yeah, I will let you eat hot pot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, nice little hot pot. Okay. Javel, yes. what part of China's uh, have you been in? You mentioned you've been before. Chengdu, uh, yeah. Shenzhen, I want to say. I think I'm saying it wrong. Beijing. Uh, I've been to a lot of places. Some places I, I don't remember. What team was your favorite that I played on? Lakers. Lakers, yeah. Oh, Lakers. okay. There yeah, it is. Lakers is champion. There it is, Lakers are the champions. All right, next up we got Prathiv. Um, you're on with Javel. Um, so I really enjoy watching a lot of your like YouTube vlog. It's like really nice to watch. So I mean, I've also seen like a lot of the stuff that you've done with like other YouTubers, like Too Hype. So it's mm -hmm. really nice to see that like an NBA player is like branching out and like doing some doing <laughs> stuff that isn't like basketball. Because you always see the dynamic. You always see the dynamic that like what is it like rappers want to be ball players, right? And then like, yeah. uh, and then like, it, it, it's fine if like, and then like, rap, and then ball players also doing like different stuff too. So, uh, my question was, what was the biggest difference you found between like the culture of like the Lakers and the Warriors? Because both of the teams are really successful, right? And um, you were especially surrounded with like a different core and like a different like uh, play style and like different coach. So, what was like the biggest difference you found between playing with like Clay and Steph compared to like LeBron and AD? The biggest difference, um, I mean, it's two different playing styles for sure. Um, with the Warriors, uh, it was it was so fast and the ball movement was amazing uh, just because we had Clay and Steph um, mm -hmm. off rip. So they're pure shooters. So it's yeah. a different play style where it's a lot more off-ball screens, a lot more on-ball screens, um, things of that nature. And then with, with, uh, with, with the Lakers, it's a more um, – I guess LeBron and AD and they need to get their buckets and AD is always playing great defense, but it, it helped me with my rebounding and, and, and positioning with the Lakers rather than with the Warriors. It was more just set screens, play hard, run the floor, get to certain spots. So it's a whole different culture, um, but both it was great experiences. Mm -hmm. great. Where are you calling in from, Prathif? Um, I'm calling in from around like uh, New York, New Jersey. Nice. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Your work? Very nice. All right, next up we got Sam. Sam, where are you calling in from? Yo, what's up? I'm in Chicago right hey, now. Sam. Hey, Sam. Chicago, nice. Yeah. Good, how are you? Working, here for a little bit. How you doing, Sam? Nice, I like, I like your little setup. Oh, what, thanks. What, what's, your question, what's your question for JaVel? Um, I'm curious. Obviously, you, you've met a bunch of uh, guys around the league and, and played with a, a ton of them. Uh, who's the funniest player in the NBA? Um, the funniest player in the NBA, uh, I would have to say is myself. <laughs> but uh, oh, come out. but second that I've met, uh, I'm sure some funnier players, but I haven't really had the time to spend time with him is uh, Troy Daniels. Troy is hilarious. Um, he's really funny. So that's probably second. Besides myself, of course. Uh, Sam, who do you think would be the funniest NBA player? Just from you know being a fan and observing. Oh man, that's tough. Um, I feel like Blake Griffin kind of was uh, funny back in the day. <laughs> um, back in the day. <laughs> yeah, very very nice. Taunts man. Um, last time I spoke with him, he was put 
about to put out an album under his moniker Pierre, um, and now your your music career is blowing up. Um, you got to tell us a little bit about it. I know you got a song on Justin Bieber's new album. Um, yeah, I was, I was uh, blessed to be able to be on uh, Justin Bieber's last album. I, I co-produced a track on there. Um, I had some other singles uh, with Quando Rondo, Two Chains, A Boogie with, with a Hoodie. Uh, who else? I've put out. I've produced a lot of music, and that's really my main thing is producing. Um, but I'm an artist also. Um, but I don't rap or anything. I just produce. So I plan on coming out with some uh, singles during this time too. I got them ready, so they're gonna be coming out soon. So you guys got got to definitely got to be ready for that one. Um, you hear that? Yeah. So you've had a lot of time to work on. That's what quarantine has allowed people some time to work on things. Yeah, so you probably got a lot of beats. I made so much music over quarantine. Oh, it doesn't make sense. Wow. Will you be working on it during the bubble, you think? Because you're did uh, you bring some of your stuff? Well, technically all I need is a computer, to tell the truth, to make gotcha. music nowadays. Um I did bring my, my computer. Um, but I really haven't worked on any music uh as of now. I've really just been focusing on basketball and uh Call of Duty is taking a lot of my time. <laughs> what are you <laughs> listening to? Any new albums? Uh, well, it's not as new, but it is, uh, I've been listening to Don Tolliver's album. Um, it's amazing. Um, who else? Uh, you, the Young Thug and, uh, Chris Brown album that came out. So it's a lot of music that, that, that's really, that I really enjoy. That's one benefit of this. There's going to be a lot of good music coming, coming your way, including from JaVel. For sure, straight to me. Also on my YouTube, all the music in there is uh, produced by me. So, and some of those are my oh, tracks. Wow. So, yeah. It's awesome. All right, next up we got Nick. Nick, where are you calling in from? He's got his Laker jersey on. Hey. Yeah, um, I'm actually calling in from New England in the United States. That's our area. Um, okay. First off, I've been loving the vlogs on the channel. Those have been really fun to watch. Um, my question is, when you f reflect on uh, your past seasons of your career, what do you think, and how do you how do you think your game has really changed since then? Um, from my from early on in my career, I feel like I depended more on my athleticism when it came to things. Um, and I feel like now I'm definitely a lot more cerebral when it comes to basketball. Uh, I, I, I work hard every day, of course, but I, I work hard in spurts to where, like, I work smart. My father always told me when I was younger, and I never understood it until – I'm going to tell you a story story. My father uh, used to have us making um, – like, doing his yard work. Just like – he was like, hey, we got to get these bricks to the back. So he had a pile of bricks in the front of the house. And then he, we had to move him to the back of the house. So me and my sister were taking as many bricks as we can carry at a time. He let us do that for about a good 30 to 35 minutes until he was like, y'all don't see that wheelbarrow right there? And I was like, wow. Like, you couldn't have told us this when we first started? And then he always said, work smarter, not harder. So I always took that to heart to, to not pass and working hard, but just doing the right thing and working the smart, working the smartest way, but still hard. So that's how I feel like I am now. I feel like when I was younger, I used to just straight athleticism and not care about anything else. But now I'm definitely more focused on the cerebral plus my athleticism. Thanks for answering. For sure. Javel, for, for someone who's um, playing basketball right now, how would you – improve your game in terms of is it a footwork thing or you know for maybe someone that hasn't grown into their body yet is it a footwork thing is it more of a skill thing or um you know what would you say how do you improve your game um working every day that's how you improve your game uh it's an everyday thing um if you're not good at shooting you, you shoot a lot of shots every day if you're not good at footwork you do a lot of footwork um, conditioning, you condition. It's, it's certain things that if you're not good at, you have to really sit with yourself and be like, you want to get better at this, or are you just cool with not being good at this? So, you got, you got to. It's, it's really a self-reflective moment to where you got to you got to talk to yourself like, okay, uh, I'm I'm shooting horrible from the free throw line. Am I gonna work on my free throws? Or I'm just gonna let it rock. So, yeah. Great insight. All right. Next up, we got Glenn. Glenn, where are you calling in from? You're one on one with Javel. Hi, I'm calling from Lake George, New York. 
What's your question for JaVale, Glenn? All right. Well, first off, JaVale, awesome speaking with you. And I got to watch you play in Washington watch with Wizards nice. back in the day. And my question is, uh, who is your greatest mentor when you came into the NBA and why? Um, I don't know if I would say someone is my greatest mentor, but one person I did look up to when I was in the league, well, I was on the Washington Wiz Wizards, was uh, Gilbert Arenas. And uh, right. people would say, like, why him? I, and I would say just because I've seen, I had seen Gil uh, do whatever he did or whatever, but he was always the first one in the gym. And I, I, I used to see him go to the gym like, three in the morning and just random times and get 500 shots up. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is what it is to be in the NBA. Like, you really got to focus on your craft no matter what you do outside of the sport. You got to understand that your first option, your first life, your first uh, goal, the first thing you have to do when you wake up is work on your game. So it, that was really impressive to me. Man. It really stuck with me. Glenn, what do you remember about JaVel from his, uh, his Wizards days? Well, I saw the game where he... Threw the alley oop to himself off the backboard. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Glenn. Great question. All right, thank ne you. Next up, next up, we have Tanisha. Tanisha, you're one on one with Javel. Hi. Um, How you doing? Good and you. I love good, seeing good. you play with the Warriors. I felt like it was the opportunity for you, people to really see you shine and allow you to be yourself outside of just a basketball player, but all the multi faucets of you. And so I love that. I love watching you on Instagram um, and seeing you with your daughter and stuff. And so my question is, what is the most important thing you learned during COVID since you had to be home with your family and uh, do other things that, you, that were out of your normal basketball schedule routine? One, one of the things I learned is not to get into uh a selfish routine, um, realize that other people are, are affected by your routines. So like I was always in the routine of work, 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 work. And I didn't get to see my daughter as much as I wanted to, but when COVID happened, like well, it, it, it flipped turn to where like, it was more like my first priority is my daughter. Like I have to make sure that I don't know when I'm gonna have to go back to work. So this is a great time for me to spend as much time with my daughter as possible. And it was amazing. I loved it. We were having dinners every night, uh, me cooking and things like that, what I usually don't do. So it was really a, a great experience. What are you What are you most looking forward to when the NBA restarts? What you, What are you curious about? Or you know, um, it's I kind think, of a first, right? Yeah, I think this whole bubble, bubble format is going to be interesting. It's been fun to follow everyone on social media and do their little tours and. Uh, talk about the life and all the food and the practices. So it's interesting to see like how it all comes together. You see them videos of practicing on different gyms and all their check-in. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it all comes together. We're used to seeing teams play over here and play over there, but now it's like they're all in one space and all the stuff is going to have so much more quick, so much more quicker than normal. Mm -hmm. And who's going to win the NBA championship, you think? I don't know. I think this whole COVID <laughs> thing turned everything upside down. No team is what they were, I feel like. I feel like everybody is coming back in and going hard, trying to be the best. It gave some people rest, gave them an uh, advantage that other teams were, you know, being were able to play off of because now people got rest. And, you know, if Oladipo comes back, you know, that changes it for Indiana. And so it's just, it's interesting. Very nice. How's the team looking, JaVel? How's, how's, how did everyone stay in shape? And how's the team looking for that first couple practices? Um, everybody stayed in pretty good shape. Uh, we've been doing a couple, uh, We've been doing a little bit of running drills and some uh, scrimmaging, and no one looks out of shape, even though we were off for three months. But that just, I mean, I'm not expected, though. I mean, I'm, I'm not uh, surprised um, just because we have a team full of professionals, and uh, we've always been a team that stayed in shape um, individually and together. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Veteran team. Very cool. All right, mm -hmm. next up, we got Jose. Jose, where are you calling from? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm calling from Connecticut. Nice. Connecticut. Hey, it's nice talking to you, bro. You do. Uh, the reason for my question before I ask it is just because I watched you when you were with the Wizards uh, going all the way up to the Lakers. Um, I seen you on Shaq and the Fool, you know, Shaq making fun of all, all your uh, all your games and everything, and I seen you mature. So my question is, how do you compare yourself from when you were a rookie as far as your growth and hunger for the game and your maturity for the game? 
Um, I think I've always had a hunger for the game. I've never not been hungry for the game. Um, I I was more selfish on him on not team ball, but more of a selfish like I got to get it, I got to get it, and I didn't understand the concept of. If everybody eats, if everybody wins, then we all win. So right. definitely uh, when I got traded from the Wizards, that's when I really learned that. And I went to uh, Denver and we yep. were straight to the playoffs. And then I had a great playoff series and I figured out what the NBA was about. The fact that winners win and not just saying like winners win games, but winners win in life. If, you, if you're winning, right. making it playoffs you can do no wrong you can do anything you want to do if you're losing all the time then people are going to nitpick on every little thing you do and say that's the reason why you're losing um i've been in a situation where i've seen nba champion champions go out every night and i'm like how are they doing this but win a championship you know what i'm saying and then i've been in a situation where i've seen losing teams who win 20 games a a season go out and it's like that's why y'all losing those are the exact same thing you guys are doing the exact same thing but it's just winners win. So when you when you're a winner, uh, your perception change, your 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 work ethic changes. Uh, it's just it's just a different feeling. Right, and that's what I that's what I felt. Because uh, like I said, when I seen your rookie year, it felt like you were trying to go for yours. You're trying to get buckets. You're trying to posterize a lot of people. And then compared to now, when you were with the Wizards, I mean with the Warriors, and then now the Lakers, you it feels like you're more of a team ball player. You're letting LeBron and AD get their thing, but I feel like you're there. You're getting all the the rebounds. It's like you're the, you're the junkyard junkyard dog right now, man. You're going for all the scraps, and you're just playing team ball, man. And I appreciate you, man. And I, I appreciate what you're doing for the Lakers, man. Thank you for coming coming over and contributing. For sure, appreciate you. We see that big L in the back of you. What's your favorite memory of uh, Javel for his Laker career so far? Man, it's just just him coming over, man, and, and just the trade when we got him, man, it was just like, it was amazing. Like, I, I knew he would do a lot for us as far as being a big man in the middle and clogging that up and making sure that there was no easy buckets. Um, what I like about JaVale is that uh, he's not afraid to contend anything. You know, you're going up for a dunk, he's jumping with you. You come into the hole, he's there with you. You know what I'm saying? So... I think a lot of guys nowadays are just like, uh, he's in the air already. I'm not even going to bother to where Javel's like, man, you're going to have to dunk on me to score. For sure. uh, and and that's what I appreciate. Him. That's why I really appreciate him and, and being in that middle and, and protecting that rim for us. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah. So sure. I, I know, I know that you, uh, you've had some correspondence with Kareem. I saw your YouTube vlog where he actually sent you something. What, 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 what did he send you? Uh, he sent me a book uh, called Skyhook. Um, I haven't opened it yet, um, but I will pretty soon. <laughs> um, and, and and you incorporated the Skyhook into your game. It's pretty nice. Oh, for sure. oh, for sure. Especially when I went yeah. to like, felt like it was necessary. I got to throw that hook just because the yeah. honor, <laughs> honor the great. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, let's talk a little bit about kind of your other passion. Uh, your Twitch page that you've launched, and you're playing a lot of Call of Duty. Talk a little yeah. bit about that. Uh, Javel McGee 88 is my Twitch. Um, I mean, I've always played Call of Duty like obsessively, but I've never streamed it. So I, at one point, I was just like, "Why well, don't I stream it?" Like I, I'm playing it anyway. So I feel like, and I kind of felt like I was wasting my time if I wasn't doing something with it. So I was like, "Okay, every time I play, I'll just stream it." And it's, it's taken off pretty well. Uh, people people seem to like it, so I enjoy it also. Um, so pretty cool. Are you playing fans or other players? Uh, I play fans. I play with other NBA players, other celebrities. Um, it's just fun, yeah. Whoever wants some. Whoever wants to smoke. <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> Is there any other NBA players that are pretty good that, that you wouldn't uh, think of? They might uh, think of game. Devin Booker's crazy. He's he's OD good. Um, who else? Uh, Paul George plays. He's pretty good. Hassan Whiteside plays. Who else? Uh, J.R. Smith plays. He's pretty good. Damn it, everybody on my team plays. AC plays. KCP plays. Uh, Quinn, he's more of a 2K player, but he has a tweet. <laughs> you guys follow that one, too. Um, yeah, so a lot of people play. 
Very cool. What's your favorite all-time video game? Would it be Call of Duty? Goldeneye would be my favorite all-time. Oh, that's classic. That's a classic. 64. Imagine if they had multiplayer, like you could play people on N64 back then. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, let's get back to the questions. Uh, Anthony, where are you calling in from? Uh, JaVale, what's it like to play with, uh, like, generational players like uh, Steph Curry and LeBron James? Oh, man, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, I, I was thinking about it when I was uh, – after I won my second championship, I was just thinking about all the great players that I played with, like, damn near Hall of Famer, some Hall of Famer, Steph, uh, Clay, uh, LeBron, um, KD. I played with all these players, Gilbert Arenas, uh, Antoine Davis. I've just played with so many players. And in my career, it's just an amazing feeling. And uh, just seeing these guys work at work, at work ethic has definitely uh, improved my work ethic for sure because these guys, they just don't stop. And then uh, what's it like to be in a dunk contest? I mean, it's amazing. Uh, everybody's just watching you make a dunk. So it's it's kind of yeah. it's it's nerve-wracking just because you're like, if I don't finish this, then I'm just – they're just going to be looking at me like, wow, you're wasting my time. So, it, but it puts the pressure on you for sure. It makes you think like, okay, well, now the pressure's on. Let's see what you got. So, it, it was definitely fun. Javel, I remember you told me at the All Star Game a couple years ago there was a story about kind of someone was watching you your dunks, right? You were telling me yeah. there was a story. Of me. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about that again? Uh, I I don't know if someone was watching my dunks, but one of the dunks that I had uh, was to like take one of like the, the fans had a sign had like signs like 10, 10, 10 or whatever. And, and at the practice dunks, I folded it up and I put it in the net and I bit it out and then dunked the ball. So that was going to be one of my dunks. But then like the dunk before I was going to do that dunk, Serge Ibaka like put, I think like a thunder doll up there. <laughs> did the exact same dunk. And I was like, damn, I can't do that. Uh -huh. one. So it kind of messed up my alignment of dunks to where like the two ball dunk was supposed to be my last dunk and I had to move it up. So it, it was, it kind of messed it up a little bit, but it all worked out. Would you do the dunk contest again? If, if would you want to do it again? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Um, no. I think the era of a big man dunk contest has, has passed. I don't think that's the thing anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> especially the fact they took the props out. If a big man can put the props in, yeah, for sure. I can bring another rim in. I can do some creative stuff like that. But if it's just pure one rim, I'm not going to beat Zach Levine and all these guys mm -hmm. who can put the ball between their under both legs and things like that. That's too impressive. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. All right, next up, we got Ied. You're one-on-one -on -one with Javel. What's going on? Where, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm from Montreal, in Canada. Montreal. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, how did it feel winning your first championship? Um, It felt great. Uh, yeah, it felt amazing. Um, it was my 10th year in the league. I had never won, won, any, won anything in the league. So it was just an amazing feeling. And it really was an amazing feeling just because I, I, I knew the work it took. I knew us going to the gym every day, us going over plays every day, off days, us going in the shoot, us going in the lift, like just the sacrifice it took and all the hard work it took, it just was like a sigh of relief. Like whew, it was all worth it rather than you do all that work and then you just lose and you, or don't make it to the playoffs. And you're like, well, like, what am I doing this for? Like you, it can really change your mindset, mindset if you're not winning. Of, of basketball, so it was definitely a great feeling. Yeah, what was your favorite memory of Javel from that season, that, that season that he won that ring? I mean, to be honest, just him coming to the Warriors, I was pretty happy. You know, when, uh, when I started basketball, everybody was talking about the Warriors, so I wanted to check it out. My father was, he didn't really have a favorite team, but uh, when I began basketball, I saw the Warriors once, and uh, I started going in. And when Javel came, uh, he start, He was like a, a big part of the championship team. So just him coming to the Warriors, um, I was pretty happy about it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Next question. We got Ahmed. Ahmed, where are you from? Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Very cool. Ahmed, what's your yeah. question for Javel? So, Javel, um... 
I know you did um, a few months ago before the pandemic. You did a little YouTube collab with Too Hype. I'm not sure if you remember that, but um, I I've seen you've you've done some vlogs. You're streaming. Is that like your getaway from all the struggles of the pandemic, the bubble? Um, I would say it's definitely it definitely keeps my uh my 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 time occupied uh, with something to do that's actually like that's actually a good thing to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not wasting my time. Um, and then, yes, I did go, go do a video with two hype. I love those guys. Um, good guys. I, I can't, I'm, I'm actually, I actually played, uh, I streamed the video games with, uh, Mopey and Chris and I think Jester also. Um, so I mean, they did. And then those were the guys who really inspired me to, to, to start a YouTube just because they were like, bro, you can do it. Uh, the people want to see this. So I, they had that in my mind the whole time. And then when the bubble happened, I was like, this is the perfect time for me to do it because I actually have something to do. I kind of wanted to do it during the, during the uh, virus, but I really wasn't doing anything interesting. So I was like, there's really nothing to vlog. But now um, they really helped me and inspired me to, to, to really do it. All right, I appreciate it. Bro. Very cool. Joe, we got a question from Hi. Um, they want it, you've won two rings. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between each one, what they meant to you? Um... The first one definitely meant everything, just because it's like your first ring, like it's your first with every your first win of an NBA championship, which is something some guys will have twenty year careers and never do. So it's just an amazing thing to be a part of that and to be in that with the organization um, as the Warriors who, who who were on a roll at the time. The second ring, it was it was actually harder to get um, than the first ring, just because. It's sort of like showing your cards. Like they saw the, what happened the first year, so they know exactly what we're gonna do. Same thing. They know exactly how this is gonna work. And uh, so it wasn't as easy as you would think it would be. Like, oh yeah, they're just going back to back, whatever, whatever. The second ring was extremely harder because teams started playing guys different ways and stopping plays we were running and very successful the year before. Um, but at the end of it, after we won it. It was uh, a weird, arrogant feeling of like, yeah, we were supposed to do that. Like, it was weird because if you put that into perspective of before I ever won one, I would be like, oh my goodness, like we're in the finals. <laughs> like, it's just, it was just such a weird retrospective of 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 a winner's mentality and a, I guess a loser's mentality to where you're like, yeah, we we're going to win. Like, there's no answer or question about it. it was, like this is what's going to happen. So the second one was a little different feeling, but just as important. And I, I know the Laker fans want to hear this. What would the third ring mean in, in this season? Um, this season, the third ring would probably mean the most just because um, I'm more of a pivotal part of this team um, to where like I'm, I'm the starting center. So it's kind of a different feeling to win a championship as the starting center of a championship team rather than coming off the bench and playing limited minutes, but still having a, a impact. Um, it, it, it's an amazing feeling. Um, and if, if we win, or I, I'm, I'm going to say when we win this third one, you know, well, my third one, it, it, it'll definitely be a great, and everything that's happening, I hope they don't try to put an ostrich on, on our win. <laughs> it, it's definitely going to be a, a great experience to just be right there on the forefront. Um, yeah. It's awesome. I know the Laker fans wanted to hear that. Um, all right, we have another question from Zavion. Zavion wants to know, he's a baller in high school, and he's working on his game. Um, what do you think the key is from being good in high school and maybe even college, but transitioning to the NBA? Uh, striking when the iron is hot, I say. Uh, you're, you're good in high school for sure, but then you get to college and you're there with a whole bunch of guys who are good in high school. So then you got to outwork those guys who are good in high school. So now that you've been the best in college of the guys that are good in college, now it's time to go to, I say, the NBA combine or or not even that. The more your name's out there, but your name's out there with a lot of great guys that are in college. So as soon as as soon as that 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 that, oh, you might go lottery comes and you're in college. Uh, in my advice, at least this is what I did. I left. Immediately, uh, I, there was no. Uh, I can get one more year, and and then I can get better and get a higher draft stock. Because life is isn't like that. You never know what could happen. Uh, 
a sprained ankle and then you're out for your the rest of the year and you could have that could have cost you 20 million dollars or whatever so i definitely feel like just just striking when it's when, it, when it's hot and making sure that you're focused and you're surrounding your circle is of winners you don't want to be around people who you're better than you want to be around people that are better than you because then eventually you'll, you'll get up there and be equal to them and then you'll just keep progressing and then, you know, as, as in life and basketball, we all have highs and lows, but how do you keep the passion for the game? Is that something that you're just born with or is it something that you're just kind of instilled, you know, that you have to kind of learn? Um, I feel like it's just circle. Uh, if you have a circle um, that really understands the passion and understands what the goal is, then they'll keep, they'll keep you on track also, not just yourself. Um, you hang around basketball players are like, well, when we go into the gym, let's go play ones. You know what I'm saying? Just random things like that. But if you hang around all Call of Duty players, they're not giving a damn about playing basketball. <laughs> you start to get in that phase of maybe it's not that important. No, 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 it is. It's, it's what's feeding you right now. So you definitely have to surround yourself with the right environment. Great insight. All right, next up, we got Philip. Philip, where are you calling from? You're one uh, yeah, I'm calling. I'm calling from North Macedonia. That's in Europe. Oh wow! Very cool. Yeah. And you got a Laker jersey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a Lakers fan for life. Also, my my mom and dad sport the Lakers from I don't know like ten years. So, wow. Joel, first wow. of all, my friend Jovan is a very very uh, close. He likes you very much. He likes you, but he forgot to submit a question. So, can you shout out him? Shout out to you. Yovan. Shout out. Shout yeah, out thank you. you. Uh, my question is, here's the thing. Um, I play center for my basketball team, and I struggle with rebounding and blocks. How can I improve that? Any tips on that? How tall are you? Oh, I don't know. I'm think, I think I'm six foot one. Six foot around one. Around that. Um, yeah. to, to get better at, what did you say, rebounding and block shots? I would say watch right. a lot of Dennis Rodman. Yeah, lives. I watch you. I watch you, yeah. Yeah, just because, and I'm saying oh. Dennis Rodman, just because Dennis Rodman was an undersized uh, postman well, who got literally some games, he had 28 rebounds and and zero points yeah, to where like, he's doing his job for blocking shots and rebounding. So definitely just tenacity, hard work, um, and figuring out ways to, 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 to outwork the taller opponents, I guess. Yeah, okay. Also, uh, I want you to, w to win us a championship. Make sure you win us <laughs> the 17 championship. For sure, for sure. Got you. Thank, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, Philip. Um, Andre thank wants to know, what are the three things that make you wake up in the morning? Great question. Um, one thing is God. Uh, that's what woke me up. Um, second thing I would say is family uh definitely, especially my daughter uh just knowing like she has a full life ahead of her and i want to make sure that that life is is a one i, I want her to have the most fun she ever had she'll ever have in her life and i want her to grow up and just be like yo my father he was the coolest dad ever i had the greatest childhood ever and i don't want any complaints i don't want i don't want any complaints if she's <laughs> like, he did this he did that no no, no no you had a great life um and then the third thing that wakes me up in the morning, just knowing, just living, just living another day, uh, just knowing that you, you're blessed. Some people didn't wake up when you woke up. Some people just didn't wake up at all. So you definitely just got to appreciate just, okay, I woke up today in, in, in a bed at least. You know what I'm saying? Some people didn't wake up in a bed. It's just so much you can appreciate, and you can't take it take take for granted at all. So, yeah, it's a lot that, that wakes me up in the morning. Great answers. Uh, William wants to know, what are your favorite places to eat in L.A.? And then which uh, city has the best food? Are you a foodie? Are you are you a food big food I'm guy? Sort of, I'm sort of a foodie. Uh, yeah. But majority of the time I'm vegan, so it's it's hard to be the greatest uh, foodie in the world. Um, but when before I was vegan, I would go to I would love crustaceans in uh, in oh, L.A. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Amazing food. Uh, and then a vegan spot in L.A. that I like that's in, uh, I think, Studio City, maybe, uh, called V-Station. It's like a Thai uh, 
I, vegans and they have the best vegetable gyoza in the world. For sure. And then what? And then what's the best food? Let's open it up since you've traveled the world. What's what place has the best food in in all of the world? Would you say? See, I'm not a I'm not a taste everybody's food type of person. Um, <laughs> if I go to Italy, I'll have some pasta. If I but I'm there's certain things I'm just like nah I'm good I don't even want to try it. It's just I'm really, <laughs> really particular about food. Hmm. Very cool. All right. So next up with the last question, we've got Justin. Justin, where are you calling in from? Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. It's very nice to meet you, JaVale. I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule, bro. I know you got a lot going on, but we as fans love seeing the personalized uh, time you guys take, and it's uh, just pretty awesome. So I have two quick questions. The first one was, uh, is there a story you can share about uh, the Black Mamba. Rest in peace, by the way. Uh, that was a tough day for all of us. But um, yeah, that would be my first one. And the second one would be, um, can you rank the top five defensive players throughout your career that you've played against? Um. Okay. So first question, um, a memory with the Black Mamba. Uh, yeah. Um, so when I got traded from Washington, I went to Denver. And then the first people we played in the playoffs was uh, the Lakers. And they knocked us off, but we took them to game seven. Um, and I was we had I had a great series, uh, that series. Um, and I think I was going against uh, Andrew Bynum. Um, but I, I just remember how hard he was working and, and how unstoppable he was in that series. Um, especially to push him out to win that game seven. And and I really admired him for that, the fact that he just gave it his all. And he, he really uh, willed that team to, to, to get to the next step of the playoffs. And then uh, before Kobe uh, passed away, um, I was trying to set up a, a, a meet just to talk to him and really just um, – just soak in some knowledge from him, but I never got to do that. And that's really one thing I really regret. Um, just being the passive aggressive person I am, I wasn't really, I was like, oh, we'll have time, we'll have time, but we never got that time. So that was definitely a, a regret that I had about the whole situation. Um, to the fact that I, I, now I, I feel like that changed me a little bit to where I'm like, we don't have as much time as we think. So you really got to, strike when the iron is hot and, and if you have if you want to do something or you want to want to ask somebody something just do it and get it over with um what was the second question second question is in your whole career take all the years you've played rank the top five defenders you've ever played against <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if i can rank them but i can tell you my top five okay i would say you know I mean I actually played against Yao Ming, and he's huge. Like I'm a, <laughs> I'm, a huge, I'm a huge person, but when when he was next to me, I felt like he was like a grown man. I was just like, what is going on? Like how is he doing this right now? Uh, him, Raymond Green. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Tony Allen. Um, Dwight Howard. Um, just pure strength and defensive, especially Orlando Dwight Howard. Um, and who's the last one I would say? How about yourself? How about you take the title from uh, Draymond and uh, bring home Defensive Player of the Year this year? Hey, anything's possible for sure. You already know. <laughs> Definitely We're appreciate it. Work. You already know. So, thank, you. thank you for the time, man. I really appreciate it. For sure. Definitely. All right, that's our last question. Thank you for everyone for tuning in, and especially those who asked the question. Uh, as always, we let Javel have the last word. Would you like to say anything to the fans out there? Um, I really appreciate you guys uh, taking your time out and uh, coming to watch me um, answer questions. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well in COVID. Hope everybody's okay. Um, I wish this happiness um, and health and just positivity and wealth to all you guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, Javel. That was a great chat. Um, we learned a lot about him on and off the court. Thanks for tuning in to another CoStar FanCast brought to you by the MBPA.
Thank you again, Vigel. Judge Javel. And then next week, we or next month, we have Trey Young. So st stay tuned to COSAR for the latest news and updates. And uh, we'll see you next time.